Devin Down here, content producer for The Big Biz Show. And today, we're gonna talk about something cosmically unbelievable. In the beginning. If you wanted to get goods delivered, there were trails and sails. Ancient civilizations crisscrossed the deserts and seas, turning sand and waves into highways of trade. Fast forwarding a few centuries, and we're trading sugars, spices, and all the things that are nice is. Nice is? If it was made, it was moved. If it was bought, it was brought. Zoom into the 21st century, and we've got cargo planes, container ships, and even drones. Today's shipping so slick, you can even order a new hat, and it'll arrive before your bad hair day is even over. Thanks, Mom. From the Silk Road to Amazon Prime, we've come a long way. But while our shipping game here on Earth is strong, there's a new frontier that's just begging for a piece of logistical action. Space, the final shipping destination? That's right, folks. If we can get pizza delivered in 30 minutes or less, who ran the old cup of pizza guy out of business? Why not a satellite to its custom orbit? Why not critical resupply missions on demand? In the future, why not even more? Meet Momentus, the guys who looked at FedEx and said, that's cute. Imagine man's future conquest of the final frontier. Space factories, moon mining, Martian resorts. Who knows? The point is, how do you get the goods from point A to, well, outer space? With Momentus low cost, efficient transportation. That's how. These guys are even developing how to use water for fuel. So the next time you order something online, just remember, the future of shipping isn't just down the road, it's across the cosmos. With Momentus Inc., space freight is no longer science fiction, it's a cosmic reality. Momentus Inc., delivering the future one orbit at a time. I'm Devin Doan, and you're watching The Big Biz Show. Oh, same artist, really same artist, wrong song. That's okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Live from the Flop 200 Studios here in sunny San Diego, California. Big Biz shows on the air. I'm here. Costas here. Tonerop's here. The DTC. Is it DTT? It is the DTC. The DTC yeah, Day Trader Trio is here. And of course, the star of our package, John Root. Momentous. Good to see you in studio, man. It's so good to be here with you guys. You guys, you need to move into, you need to move into uh, San Diego. Let's see I tell you what, it's gorgeous outside. I'm awfully tempted. I drive over here with beautiful. <laughs> you guys are based for our studio. I know where you're based, but for our studio, for, for our live audience, who are you based? Where are you based? San Jose, California. Yeah. Just so. down the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And and any any uh, chances that you're going to move to Cape Canaveral? <laughs> <laughs> or we're, Cape Kennedy, as Costa likes to call it? Capcom. We, uh, we're down there regularly for our launches, but no, we, we're, we're going to stay in California. I want to I talk about, for those people who haven't uh, heard your whole story, because we picked up a big chunk of audience. Uh, through our friends at Bloomberg and, and through another of our other affiliate channels who, uh, through our 110 million homes, through Biz Talk Radio Network, Biz TV, as well as American Forces Radio Network. Tell the story from the beginning. How, how, did, how did this whole thing come about? Well, there's been this change in the way people are going to space. First of all, it costs a lot less to get to space because of all the improvements and launches. And then there's smaller satellites. And so the people who were founded the company looked at that and said, you know, there's an opportunity there for us yeah. where there's going to be a need for transportation of smaller satellites. There's going to be a need to go to precise orbits. And then there's a lot more stuff in space. You know, they say space is vast, but it's filling up, brother. I mean, the yeah, thousands right. and thousands of satellites being launched per year. And they need to go to unique orbits, and they need to be moved. Uh, and then there's this whole budding field of in-space manufacturing and logistics that's sure. coming along plus then all the military applications and defense and intelligence applications. What I wanted to know is, what was the adoption, what was the first conversation? Because you're gonna what, right? I mean, were you doing the pitching or was there find a need and fill it, as Steve Forbes says, to be successful, you know, just find, find a need and fill it. Was, were you started getting, you know, whispers that this is something that they could use? People have talked about the need for, in the space industry, the need for in-space servicing, for logistics, for transportation for a while. But you know, it hadn't really taken off and you hadn't seen a need for it. And so when this, this edge of the market was developing and we were pitching that to investors, you know, some of the ones that, that want to be really right at the forefront, sure. they were the early adopters, the early investors, mm -hmm. uh, venture class investors and others. What, so, and, and so with respect to venture investors, probably not private equity yet, but Friends and family, Series A, venture investors. Venture capital investors are criteria specific to a number of things. Geographic region, stage of capital. Some, some people don't do startups, some people only do startup. Um, geographic region, and of course, industry. So if you have a retail uh, soap business like Mike has, super weird, um, and you're in California. It's not a rope. 
<laughs> it's, and, and you're in Southern California, you need you know, two million dollars to start up capital. There are criteria specific investors that'll even look at that deal. Who says, okay, we're doing a A round for fifteen million dollars in Southern California, or, or, I beg your pardon, Central California, in the space industry? How did you find guys to pitch to at that point? You know, people that want to be part of technology and be at the the early stages of technology are the guys that get attracted. Will they listen to anything? Guys and gals. No, they won't listen to anything. They want to see they want to see that there's a significant growth path. They know that the early years you're going to be spending money. Which well, hence the investment, hence the reason they get a big chunk of chunk exactly. of equity or, they want or to convertible see or whatever. Many multiples and they also want to see that it's part of a, a area of technology development that's going to be growing that your your total addressable markets are are good in, in the sense that not only the larger market like the space market but the part that you're going to participate in that's truly addressable and they want to see a path there and something differentiated in technology unique and that's where things like our water-based propellant not having to highly toxic chemicals stuff that's literally like distilled water from mm -hmm. the grocery store uh, that you can use for propellant in a different way are you wow. at, are you at the point now where maybe there were some of those guys and gals as you say who went ah John nah this ain't are they calling work. you back now calling yeah. you back and say hey bud are you still doing that rocket stuff yeah but not at the same price yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly no you, you do have some people saying you know I didn't think you'd get that thing to work in space wow you've done that oh. and, and you guys are doing it repeatedly mm -hmm. uh, so there are there are those those folks because uh, there were a bunch of naysayers say you, you're never going to get to space, you're never going to get that to work, you're not gonna, never going to be able to meet the schedules and the cost points you want, but you know, there's fewer of those people all the time, right? And so that's, that's what you can do where we've had demonstration missions where we've actually demonstrated what something can do in space. And so we're not, uh, you know, waving our hands or pointing to drawings, but there's actual data. So John, for me, as you know, being general partners in a venture fund in the past and running a hedge fund, that was the, the technology and the, and the proof of concept would almost be separate, second to me. Primarily to me would be, what is the addressable market? How do you prove that addressable market? Because look, at, now I look at it, it's like, oh sure, this is obviously a thing and it's gonna be a thing. It's only, you're at the tip of the spear here. I mean, you're even pre-peak right now. Right. But as you're going out there, uh, and, and let's, it's like the first guy that says uh, Uber, you're gonna want. Right. You're gonna get, you're gonna offer limo rides yeah. for 30 bucks. I don't speak for German, 15 what miles. is that? But uh, so uh, honestly, it, so how was that first pitch? Because I have to believe you guys, I mean, you got a pitch deck, you're going out there, you're hustling capital, um, you guys have got a certain, and the way these things go, folks, is you get a friends and family around going, you, you gather up your money, you put your own money in, and you get to a point where you've got to bring in secondary capital. And it's either in a first stage round or an A round, what they call it. And you have to price that A round, I'm assuming you did a convertible debenture, uh, or did you go straight equity at the time? Straight equity, yeah. Because typically you can't, and the reason you'd go convertible note, which means that you're gonna l borrow the money, and you're going to convert it to equity later upon some event. And the reason you do that is because most startups can't defend a valuation. Hey, we're going to be worth $27 million. Actually, you're worth 50000 right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're, worth the, right. you're worth the furniture and maybe some of the paper in the, in the office. So you went straight equity. And when you're talking to these guys, because I think this is an important lesson here, because you not only um, uh, painted the picture of profitability and, and, and a possibility, but now you've executed. And that means from here on out, it gets easier and easier to raise capital. Do you remember that first meeting? Well, I remember some of the early pitches really well where um, people are saying, look, like you said, I've got an investment thesis. I want to be in the space industry because they saw this big expansion. They thought space is going to be the next frontier. And then I'm a technology investor or I'm willing to, to take some, some risk, admittedly, for the big return. So, and you know, what was interesting is even during those presentations, there's a moment where they say, huh, that's really interesting, you know, and it's and you can observe, uh, you know, the facial expressions and so on that that light bulb <coughs> went off that they're starting to believe, OK, there's something here. Sure. And then you then it gets much more granular, you know, where you're trying to dice up the market or, or what are the near term milestones that show what you're saying is going to happen actually happens. Yeah. And, and who who were the, the providers at that point? Was SpaceX around or was it NASA or? SpaceX was around and there, were, <coughs> there was a bunch of other rocket companies who said they were going to fly. And one of the things that was attractive to investors was for us to say, 
look, SpaceX is going to be our, our partner. We've, mm -hmm. we've worked with them ah. to put that in place. But we're, we're like Switzerland. We're agnostic. We mm -hmm. can fly in anyway. We're not going to be just dependent on But the point is, going to those way. type of investors that are already, yep. that already uh, have their toe dipped into those other technologies. That's right. Made your life, the on-ramp a little bit easier, correct? Yes, and especially if they're active in the space, in the space space, if you will. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> when you joined us about eight months ago, you had deployed about seven customer satellites at that point. Where are we at right now? We've deployed 15 customer satellites on three <laughs> missions in under a year, we, plus our three uh, deployer vehicles, which are satellites technically themselves for a total of 18. And we, uh, we assembled and launched those in a year, which is, is really fast in the space industry in general, particularly for your first three. And then uh, we're on our way to do more. This fall, we've got another launch in November. We're gonna deploy at least in three, maybe four more. Much more to come here. John Rude, Momentus. MNTS is their stock symbol. Of course, you can go to momentus.space. I got so much. It's Space Day, by the way, on, uh, on Big Biz Show. <laughs> <laughs> space it. Transportation and Infrastructure Services. Momentus. MNTS. More Big Biz coming up. Stand by.